Hey, Pokemon Good Day, everybody. This is Sports on Newgong Dvorak, and this is going to be an MLB lockout video. First and foremost, please continue to like and subscribe. Help us get to 215 by the end of March, as our end of March, or hopefully mid March goal, and then we can grow on that as time goes on through the end of March. But there's a lot of news coming in from Evan Drellick, the Ken Rosenthal, the Jeff Passons, and etc. <clears throat> of the world. Um, of course, as we knew from last night, 161 River Ave. Um, is a very good um, YouTube account to get updates on a bunch of different stuff related to the lockout. But the MLB official says the Players Association requested to speak to the board this morning, so they did that. And then Drellick said this was five hours ago now. The most significant issue remaining in talks, although not the only, is said to be the draft pick conversation, the eliminated elimination of the qualifying offer. The players want it. MLB has proposed it, but MLB wants the international draft, which is not a small matter or give. Where I agree with the guy from 161 River Ave, I think the international draft actually sounds cool and fun. The problem is, though, which I didn't know this until I read a couple articles that David Ortiz uh, referenced. If you look at Ken Rosenthal's Twitter, he has a, um article with, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember who it's, oh, with uh, Maria Torres, where they talk about um, assessing the pros and cons of the international draft. But one of the big things is the the president of Dominican baseball, and then you have the Venezuelan baseball. They're not as up to being able to just adjust on the fly if you in, impose an international draft, even starting in 2024, that um, I think it was Fernando Tatis Jr. commented on it. He, they can't just do stuff kind of in a snap of a finger. That's not how quick things are over there compared to here. So it's something that they kind of have to work slowly with the Venezuelan baseball representative, the Dominican baseball representative, the Cuba, and every other um, international um, body to, to bring the players over and to allow there to be an international draft. That's something that probably can't happen just logistically as fun as it sounds having the uh, six, seven, or 18 blocks, whatever they decide at the end. At first, I think it was six, now it's seven or 18 blocks reported by Jeff Passon that they keep rotating the team. So if you're the first seven teams, one year you'll then be the next seven, and then you rotate the bottom seven teams up to the top seven or something like that, depending on on if it's six, seven, or 18 blocks. So that sounds fun and actually a good way to do the draft if they can advertise it and do it. Well, I actually like that by the MLB. The problem is logistically, it sounds like it's something that can't work um, from when people talk to Dominican players and everything. And there's also the Venezuelan body of players and many other Spanish countries that players come from. That it's something that probably has to happen closer to 2026, 2027, longer down the line. So they have more time to set up the logistics behind it and you can't just throw these countries into it because they're not going to be ready to send the utmost talent where Juan Soto even coming on he was one of the last guys in his year to even declare um internationally when he's obviously now a guy that's compared to Tony Gwynn when it comes to hitting so uh that's just a way to put it there it's something that sounds really fun but it's something that I think the MLB has to realize is kind of more down the line and something that confirmed this um the MLB um, apparently answered the PA's proposal by offering three options, which said, one, to agree to eliminate draft pick compensation and examine the international draft, which I think that's not a bad option because the international draft, as I said, sounds cool. It's just they got to go over all the logistics. So if they eliminate the draft pick compensations and examine it, that's not a bad thing. This is not a good option. Give option to reopen CBA in a couple years if union won't agree to draft. That option sucks. They should not agree to that. And agree to international draft and elimination of draft pick compensation. That depends on if they're able to think they can agree, get the logistics in Venezuela or the DR, so they're not screwed in those countries trying to help out the MLB with the international draft and thrown off guard with this uh, in this CBA. They got to get them up to speed, and I don't know if that's really realistic by 2024, but if they can do it, sure. But it said the union would find the idea of reopening unappealing, which is obvious. But Ken Rosenthal said that because if a deal in a few years is working well for the players, the league would then have the option to escape and stage another lockout. So that would not be good for anybody, and that would be only good for the owners at that point if they had that option. Um, but per a union source, also, this just came out eight minutes ago. So this is new. Uh, Ken Rosenthal put MLB told PA it would counter on all issues today, but now league is saying it will do that only if union agrees to do one of three options regarding international draft. League source disputes that account. So now it's up in the air. What is actually 
from Ken Rosenthal eight minutes ago, <clears throat> the direction they're going, because again, I'll read that again. The MLB told the PA it would counter on all issues today, but now league is saying it will do that only if union agrees to one of the three options I just read regarding the international draft, and we can read those options Again, one is agree to eliminate draft pick compensation, examine the international draft. Two is give MLB option to reopen CBA in a couple of years if they won't agree to the draft. And three is agree to the international draft and eliminate of elimination of draft pick compensation. So apparently the MLB wants them and needs them to agree to those three things uh, per a union source that it would not, it will only basically agree to keep going back and forth the MLB side, it sounds like. Uh, if the union agrees to one of those three options, where then a league source disputed that account. So who knows what side's telling the truth? Obviously, someone has to be lying on that end because both sides can't be right there. But hopefully, as numbers, when it just comes to the overall numbers, as that's what I'm about to close out on, got better for the players, this is able to bring it closer, even when you still have that divide of a union source saying they need to have one of those three options, otherwise there's not really much back and forth anymore, and a league source disputing that account. The good things are the MLBPA, uh, on minimum salaries, the MLBPA <clears throat> now started at 710 and goes up to 780. Uh, players were recently starting at 725 and had dipped to 715 before this offer. MLB remains all the way down at 700K, which is still way under all, all the other four leagues, and finishing at 770. So I think the players is a better, much better for them set up there because I'll say it again that I said on Pins videos. Players want more early, and they want that pre-arbitration pool, which is now proposed today, moved to $65 million in a pre-arbitration pool. That's what they moved it to. They want that because compared to every other sport, or an NFL practice squad, an NBA G League, and also in the AHL, you get paid above 30K. You actually live a livable wage. You don't live damn near close to that. You work however many other jobs you have to work. Or you just are fortunate to have money from your family, whatever it is. You have to find extra money as a minor league baseball. You get paid 8K to about 14, 8, 15K max. And that is right above the U.S. poverty line is about 12, 8. So that's why players want to have these pre-arbitration um, uh, pools to come from. They want to have the minimum salaries increase because they get paid by far the most diddly squat coming up through the system where even <clears throat> I was looking at it uh, the other day too when it comes to the ECHL, which is double A in hockey, some of those guys get paid in the 20Ks, which is a lot more livable than 14-something. So like the MLB has to, has to, put that into factor, which is why these players are asking for better minimum salaries, why they're asking for that pre-arbitration pool, and why they're also asking to make it more competitive around the league. The um, When it comes to the uh, thresholds, they're asking for 232, 235, 240, 245, and 250 on the CBT thresholds over the course of the deal so it can keep going up. So yes, yeah, some teams that aren't going to spend just aren't going to spend like the Rays and A's and et cetera. But there's other teams that that will open more of a spending spree for. Maybe like the Cardinals that spend on some guys but not on others can spend on a lot more guys now. Like teams like that for one example. So I think it, or, or the um, Blue Jays who have all this great young talent will have a lot more money to be able to keep that young talent around and even add more around it. So th there's those things, so to speak. I think it's coming closer, but... The international draft's going to be interesting because the last point I'll close on in this video is um, Ken Rosenthal said the international draft is non starter for Latin players as it may not be acceptable to union even with major MLB give. Union's latest proposal still wants qualifying offer eliminated as well as highest CBT thresholds and pre arbitration pool than MLB has offered. So, again, going off of that, if they can agree to one of those three things I read at the beginning, which I think is going to be either one or three, I don't think they're going to agree to reopen the CBA. They're either going to agree to the international draft and just suck it up and hope they can get the logistics in place with the, by 2024, which I don't think is the smartest thing. I think the first choice would be the smartest for the players, agree to eliminate draft pick compensation and examine the international draft because that's not them saying they're making you do the international draft. They just want to see how the logistics play. And with that, in theory, with that being accepted, I would think the union and that league could go back and forth and say, well, the DR, Venezuela, et cetera, they're not really ready to give us 
all this yet because they're not up to speed and they can't do things as quick in the snap of the finger like the Tatises and others of the world have already commented on. Give them some time, maybe to 2027, 2026, whatever. And I think that's why that might be the best option. But again, the numbers are getting closer. Um, the union gave them, or the, the league has kind of gave them uh, three things that they can accept. I think the top option is the best option. The numbers have gotten a lot closer. The MLBPA went all the way down to 710 to start for the minimum, which the MLB is at 700, so that's not that far of a gap. Um, the MLB went up ab above um, a, a, a good bit, but they still want 65. So I feel like that 65 from the PA is more of a hope they can get 50 from the MLB. That's just, I don't have sources on that, obviously, but that's just my guess because the way you negotiate is obviously trying to get as much as you can get. So if they go 65 million, they're probably hoping they count over 50, and then that might be a sweet spot there if they get 50 million in the pre R bonus pool that then they can just keep growing it potentially a little bit as next CBAs come onward and so forth. But this has been a quick update for about 11 and change minutes on the MLB lockout and all the stuff that it details. Hopefully, since numbers are coming closer, the PA agrees to one of those three, number one, uh, options, and then can uh, come to a deal. That's just my preference. I think number one would be the best because then they don't have to be honed into the international draft. They do eliminate the draft pick compensation. But we'll have to see what else that entails. But everybody have a great day and pleasant day. This has been an update on the MLB Lockout by Sports Fan News. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above them. Easy to use widget to keep the channel going and growing. Stay safe out there, everybody, and enjoy your day.